I did everything I could to miss this. Sorry, guys. It was West Coast, yeah, it got me. Just moments ago, I was right where I wanted to be. <laughs> All right, what's up? I think the last time we talked to you, Coach, uh, you were saying you were not intending to trade Russell Wilson. And then, uh, of course, you did. Well, yeah, th yeah, things changed. You know, there was a there was a long period in there working it, and um, you know, I didn't have the intention of, of wanting to trade him. But we looked at the opportunity, and once we got a good look at it, it there was uh, there was reason, and so we got a really good deal, and so we went ahead and made it. It took a long time to get to that, though. I mean, there was a long process where, you know, I didn't think we would do it, and it was such a complicated trade to make uh, that I thought it would be all but impossible to pull it off. But we, it, it did work out, and we got an opportunity that we thought was, was really too good to, to pass up. And so uh, we made a decision for the franchise that really, I think, is a really good one. What was the key to kind of tilt in the balance? It was a combination of uh, the elements that gave us the advantage that it was a good one. You know, there was financial issues, there was uh, roster issues, there was uh, the ability to be really active as moving forward. The drafting was really obvious, you know, the, all the picks that we got. The players that we picked, it was all, all of those elements that made it come together. Do you have an update on Chris Carson? Pardon me? Do you have an update on Chris Carson? Like, yeah, um, Chris is feeling pretty good. He, you know, he's making progress. He's looking forward to playing. He thinks he's going to be able to pull it off. You know, So um, we're, we're looking optimistically at it. Um, he won't know until he gets back and really gets going. He, physically, he'll be able to run around and all that kind of stuff. It's whether or not he can take the hits and all that kind of stuff. We'll just have to wait and see. But he's planning on it. What went into the decision, cutting Carlos Dunlap and Kerry Hyder and sort of, I guess, the way it's feels like you put together? Well, put together. You, you can see we, we, we put together a, a different group, you know, is, is what's happened. You know, getting Channel was really a, a big deal to us. Seeing the development of Daryl was, was important to us. Um, we, we thought that we could make a shift there, and obviously there's always the financial issues. Those are the decisions that fall into the category of the really tough ones this time of year. Who's pointing that back here, but you've had him here before with... So, well, yeah, I think I hope you can see that the combination of what we've done uh, with, with Quentin coming in and, and also Shelby, there's a whole group there that we're really excited about that gives us a, a different kind of flavor and, and, a, and a compliment to the big guys that we like playing in the early downs. You know, so it's uh, the whole it's, it's really those four guys plus the, the ability to move that thing around with Alton Robinson as well, and we'll see how that all fits. But it looks like it's a big it's a big change for us. How much will I, I guess would the average fan be able to see that you're playing more three four than four? that much different. I've heard some of our guys come out as you've asked them as they've been you know, introduced to you. It's not going to look that much different because we already play the concepts. We've been doing it for a long time. I mean, this goes way, way, way back into our system. I've, I've told you guys for a long time we've played with 3-4 personnel playing 4-3 defense for years. And so it's not that much different. However, however, we are we are shifting a bit of our emphasis to the style of player that we're trying to get on the outside. It's, it's, uh, so you do see that happen. You said that Daryl is the ideal body type for that position. Clint has said that you guys don't really plan on dropping those guys back. If that's the case, why do you, why do you have to have that certain body type? They will still drop, though. They'll be in the system because it's, when you're into the 3-4 realm of defense, those guys do drop some. And so we want guys that are capable to do that. And... Uh, but they won't, like Clint said, we're not going to do a lot. We want guys coming forward, we want guys rushing the passer more. So there'll be a, a bigger emphasis on that. Going back to Chris, uh, I think during the, Chris Carson, during the year, I remember said the same thing. He had like, to see how he's going to get hit, so he was like, during practice. When he got to do physical contact, I think, on like, Thursday, how did he feel after that practice? He didn't have his confidence. He, he wasn't confident that he, that he felt good enough. You know, that, that's really what it got down to. He just, just wasn't. He didn't have the feeling like he'd go ahead and take on the hits that he needed to at the time. He felt uh, there was actual, you know, some sensas sensations you know, that he felt that, that cued him that he, you know, he shouldn't go. So now, I guess you can't really try that again to what, training camp? Yeah, the well, it's going to take a long time. Unless, unless just the activity gives him some indicators, you know. Have your conversations with Colin Kaepernick continued to progress since the last time you spoke publicly about it? He said he's still hopeful of an opportunity. Yeah, our conversations have not progressed the early connection that we made. Um, I've watched a bunch of his workouts and stuff. He sent me stuff along the way to kind of keep me up with what's going on. He's, he's really working hard. He's all over the country traveling around, you know, getting his workouts in. So he's still, he's still competing for it. Is there any judgment that can be made from what he's doing? Is there any judgment that can be made from what he's doing? I mean, it's, you know, going against air. I mean, it, can you really gather anything? 
yeah, you can see. Yeah, you can see that he can. He's running around. He's throwing the ball. You can tell the distance that he's throwing the ball. You can get a sense for the velocity. Um, there's comments from the players that he works out from. So he's getting some information out. He's doing a nice job, you know, presenting himself. If he still feels that's a way that Denver goes to Seattle this year, what do you think that'll be like when Russ comes? When Russ comes to Seattle this year with Denver, what do you think that game will be like? It'll, I don't know. It'd be kind of a classic. You know, it'd be a nice little matchup. Uh, when Drew came out of college, you know, we made our, our assessments and evaluated him for the draft and all that. We saw him as a, as a big, strong-armed, mobile, aggressive, athletic quarterback. And uh, he had thrown a ton of footballs. He had been in a very aggressive program, you know, where you got to see him do everything. All He used the entire field. We saw all of that stuff and really liked what we saw. We can still see that. We see that right now when we watch the film. And so... Uh, Unfortunately for him, he's, he's, you know, he's been in, in, his play has come about where there's a lot of turnovers in this game. And that just doesn't fit with us. But we just have to fix that. We have, we have to change his mentality and do the things that we can do to help him, you know, be at his best. There's nothing that we see there that doesn't show us that the potential is there. So he's, a, he's in a developmental mode as he, as he enters our program, but yet he's already been through three years of in and out of activity. He's played a lot of football, and so we think we can capitalize on that. And... Uh, you know, there's really, we see, what we're seeing now, we see all upside. What have you learned about him one at a time you've been around? He's a really good guy. He's really um, balanced. He's got a, a, a clear mentality about him. He's, um, he's positive. He's a positive, optimistic kid. Uh, he's looking forward to being a great player. That's what he, he's come into the league. He's all, that's the only way he's ever known himself. He's been in the kind of a mode where he has not been able to recognize the person that he knows himself to be. And so he's really, he's really driven to, to take in all of the information. He's, he's, done, he's doing everything right. He's doing everything right. So uh, I can't wait till he starts throwing with our guys and we get some feedback on that, just how, how they, they sense him. But we know that, he, we know that he's, he's presenting himself to be successful. He's doing everything he needs to do. Yeah, it, that, it's, that's my way with everybody. You know, I mean, I think guys perform at their best when they're at their most confident. And so uh, that's a process that, that has already begun. The way we talk to him, the way we set expectations, the standards that were, that were designed for him. Um, every, everything, you know, Shane is a very upbeat, forward-thinking guy, and, and uh, Dave Canales is as well. Those guys, are, they're going to draw his, his strengths out. That, that's, that's what they're, they're intending to do. That seems to be in your nature. Well, that's what Yeah, that's, that's how I've been coaching my entire life. You know, and it's been about seeing the potential that somebody has and then, and then doing everything we can to, to bring it to life, you know. And so I'm a guy, if, if you show me all of the plays of a, of a player when he does well versus the plays when he does poorly. I'm looking at the ones when he does well. I'm looking at what he's capable of doing. I'm trying to figure out how to make that come to life rather than worry about the stuff that's the negative. This is a classic example. I mean, it's a classic opportunity for us to turn a guy's career around. And uh, we're very optimistic about doing that because we know we know how to do that. And we know that we, he'll be in an environment where that's all he'll feel. So um, <laughs> there's just a really good chance he's going to be able to really take the most out of it. You get brought back to the NFL and consistency. How much did that factor in with you guys bring back Justin Coleman and resigning? Justin Coleman was a was a classic uh, you know nickel corner. He was he was tough and physical. We had seen him at New England, we traded for him at the time. He came in and did really well. He got paid a bunch of money when he went on, you know, and so he comes back around with a whole world of experiences to add to it. But the core of who this kid is, he's a tough guy. He competes his butt off. Uh, he, he's a great guy to have in your club. He contributes on special teams as well. He's played a lot of corner too, and he's been in a lot of difficult situations, particularly at Miami, uh, in his one-on-one -on -one matchups and the way that they played him. So we've seen him really clearly and uh, he just brings an element of competition that's exactly what we need. Corner was a position that took a, sorry, that was a position that took a while to get settled last year. How do you feel about that group overall, the cornerbacks, just the guys you've added, the guys you brought back? Yeah, we feel pretty confident that we know what we got. Um, I know we didn't see a lot of Trey Brown, but we, but we, we feel like we got a, a good feel for him. He, he, 
he just did not take any sidesteps along the way. You know, we just had to just believe what we were seeing and give him enough opportunities. So he, he's there. Sydney coming back. Sydney really developed. His confidence really showed. So we feel strong about what he can do as well. Um, so we'll, we'll see how this position continues to grow. Artie Burns is coming in. Uh, we've got background on him. We've coached him before uh, with, with our guys. Um, and he's a, a premier athlete for, for the position. So it's, it's the Ugo Amadi, the nickel spot. We're going to take a look at, uh, um, at Blair again, see what Marquise looks like back at the nickel spot. Remember, we started with him. So that's a, that's a very competitive spot for Justin Danner into. So we got two pounder safeties that we love uh, and with leadership and toughness and playmaking and all that. I think it's going to be one of our best groups that we've had. We've just got to, it's just got to all come together for us. And uh, I'm really excited about the way that we're coaching them, the guys that are bringing in their stuff, uh, and the, the way that they'll, you know, they'll teach them our football. Um, it's going to be exciting to see that develop. Are you a so, we're just down there. Oh, yeah. Where are Jamal and Quandre and their recovery right now? Um, man, they're so positive that they, they, they burn the phone up, you know. They, they really, they're, they're, um, they sound great. Uh, Q was in when he signed up a week ago, and he wanted to do backflips for us in the, in the, in the building. So, <laughs> don't, you know, don't scare us like that. But he's, he's already doing stuff. So uh, Jamal couldn't be more positive about how it's going. So, But it's still conversation until we see him, you know, really. But... Um, but they're making great progress, and their attitude and their mentality is perfect. Are your receivers in some ways even more important and more valuable commodity when you have a less proven, less established group? Yes and no. I mean, they, they can only be what they can be, but uh, a quarterback couldn't be more excited than, than Drew is and, and our guys coming in at this spot to have DK Metcalf sitting there and, and Tyler Lockett. Those two guys are phenomenal football players. They will not have seen... The new guys will not have seen much of D.S. Bridge, but he's a fantastic developmental kid coming up. Uh, we see him able to do all kinds of stuff. Freddie Swain's been a good, solid guy for us. Uh, you never know what we can add in that kind of category as well. But that, that group is a really, really it's a big time because they can make the plays down the field, they can make the plays underneath, all that kind of stuff. So we're, we're, we're very fortunate. You've seen some big-time receivers traded to some teams that don't necessarily have the quarterback. So if you can't get the quarterback, maybe you go get the receiver to, to make your quarterback. Yeah, well, one thing for sure, you know, in our quarterback spot, we want guys to control the ball down the field. You know, we want to get the ball down there because we, we, can, we can get deep. We've always been an explosive-oriented passing game, and we want to continue to do that to complement with the balance in the running game. And these guys, they need a big arm guy. So um, as far as that's concerned, that, that you can, you know, Gino, Drew, those guys can can chuck it. Uh, Jake can, can throw the ball a ton. That's a big, a big deal for us. Is there a reason Gino awesome. hasn't resigned yet? Yeah, it just hasn't happened. There's... Um, it's a negotiation. Sam, what's up, man? Yeah, I, I like that we're trying to, f to figure it out. I like that we continue to progress to figure out, you know, is there a better way to do this thing? And, and I, I would like to see both teams have an equal shot. That's, that's what I'm hoping that they get. And it doesn't feel like that when you go right down the field and score. We, we've been a beneficiary of, of that success, you know, over the years. It seems that's how I, I remember it, but... Uh, I still think it's, it should be as balanced as it can be. So whatever comes out, if it's going that direction, it's going to be right there. With DK, do you expect to get um, I, I hope, you know, we, we intend for him to be with us. You know, we'd love to figure that out. So um, we're in a normal kind of mode this time of year. You know, we're not to that topic yet, uh, specifically because we've got so many other things going on. But we'd love to have him. We, there's, there's no way I could imagine playing without him. What are your thoughts on women's inclusion and all the women? I think it's a it's a beautiful thing. It's way 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 overdue. Oh, you just put prior to promoting Clint Hart, was there a time you thought he might come in and press the ball with Miami Hurricanes? Oh yeah, yeah yeah. That was that was something that we talked about quite a bit. Clint has had a number of teams come after him over the years, and uh, he's really been comfortable and liked where he's been and invested in his time with us. And it was obvious that he he's been one of my guys for a long time. He's been. He's been in a, in a role in our, on our staff where he's had a lot of responsibility to help work with the players and, and situations that we deal with and, and discipline and leadership and all kinds of stuff. And he, he's been fantastic. So it's, it's been a grooming process the whole time. So he's, he's, he's taken, made the decisions to stay with us, and that was one of them for sure. Are you anticipating having Gino back? Yeah, I think, I, I think so. I mean, every, all of our conversations are along that, that way. But... Uh, and I think it would be a shame if, if he misses this opportunity. This is, he's, he's invested a lot with us. Uh, he knows our system the best. 
He performed well at it once he got going last year. You know, can he take off from where he finished up? You know, unfortunately, you know, the Jacksonville game was his last game, and, and, and uh, it was almost a perfect football game for him, you know. And so um, we have very high hopes that he can run the system really well. And uh, so I, he's not going to miss the opportunity. I can't imagine it's just too good for him. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he sees, you know, this is the opportunity he's been waiting for has finally arrived. And so uh, I just can't imagine he's going to miss it. But we got to get it done still. So, and, excuse me, um, so we, we got to keep working it, if you know, in case it doesn't happen. Um, so we're competing now. Yes, sir. What's Sorry up, you How you doing, man? Um, just to follow up on Gino, what have you learned about him over the past year or two, just in terms of you know, what he brings to the table? And, the, 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 things that, the things that Gino has presented to us is his consistency and, and really the loyalty of being part of our program. When it comes to this time of year, we have to make a decision. Does he want to come back again and stay with us over the last few years? He's always wanted to be here. He liked where he was. Uh, he liked the relationship he had with the coaches and, and myself and our, their program and all of that. It's just been really upbeat and positive. Um, so... Uh, He's, he's shown that when he finally got his opportunity, I mean, he sat forever. I mean, it's been like four years before he played uh, since he really got a chance to play. And so the couple games it took him to get started, very difficult games, and we had weather conditions, we're on the road and all that, and he, all, we almost pulled every one of those games off, um, showed that he was capable, that he could hang in there. When he got two games under his belt, now he goes to Jacksonville. He, I think he started the game 14 for 14 or something like that. You know, I mean, couldn't have been more impressive. Uh, played almost a perfect game that day, and, and so, and that was the last shot he had, you know. So, everything has led to the opportunity. He was available for it when it came, and he and he took advantage of it. And then here it is. <laughs> That's why I'm kind of come on, you know, get you know, get it going. He needs to get with us. So, but he's got time, and uh, so it's been positive and upbeat and hopeful, and and as well as he's a really tough, competitive kid, which we love. You know, his mentality. The players love him, and, and he gets along with everybody. So. Uh, it's gonna. This is if it all gets set up the way we're seeing it happen, like it should happen. It's gonna be a very competitive opportunity, and I'm gonna look at this thing very much like we did years ago, and 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 structure it so everybody gets a great shot at it, and you know, as best we can. Um, and that's what competition is all about. We, I got to give them the opportunity by presenting it, and um, we'll see if Gino and you know can pull it off. He does have, he, he's kind of the leader because he's been with us for so many years. He knows what's going on. You want if, if you re-sign Gino, do you feel like you need to add another? Add Everybody's another? complained how noisy it was. <laughs> 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 I just said, if you re-sign Gino, do you feel like you would, be, would need to add another veteran quarterback? Or would I'm, guy? We are totally in, in, in that mentality that, that the fourth guy may be impo important to us. And uh, for the long haul of how it takes, we, so we're, uh, we're definitely still in the quarterback business. What's the feedback been like from Canales from the pro day workouts you've seen? Like Malik and Kenny? Um, he has been on, on the road, yeah. It, Everything has been uh, good. We haven't put it, sat down to put it all together because he wasn't back when we left. So I, I don't have all of the final on it. It's just kind of the updates and that it's working out okay. And we catch him on the film every day to make sure he's there, you know, in the workouts. Um, but it's gone well. And it's really an important part of it, that, that all that he brings back to us. So I just haven't been able to sit down. Going all the way back to 2012, what do you remember about scouting Russell ahead of that draft and the conviction that John had in him? Um, well, yeah, I remember everything about it. Um, what do you want to know? <laughs> Are there any interesting stories that stand out about the scouting process or about, about how, how convicted John was in it? What those um, conversations well, he's convicted as he, I mean, think about it, to, to take a guy that everybody else passed up with the conviction that he had was because he had done his work and he had seen him and he, and he, had, uh, he had enough information that excited him about the prospects, regardless of all of the whatever the, the naysayers were, were putting out there, you know. And, and uh, so when when we made the move, um, we did make the, the move with conviction, you know. And we loved the fact that he was an all-around athlete and he showed a lot of the, the baseball background and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's very similar to as we look at Drew. You know, Drew, Drew's got the the background of a, a, a diverse, uh, you know. Effect from the sports that he's played. He's a big basketball player and a very, I mean, he could have played college basketball, you know, and that's a big statement for a guy athletically and, and his background. It's, so it, it's those kinds of things that John had found you know, by uncovering all of the you know, important stuff. So.
it's, it's, it's just a similar regular normal process. There was nothing unusual about it. It's just that he was impressive enough that we, you know, we took a shot at him. And then he pro proved that he was worthy. Just to clarify, Pete, you said that you were still in the veteran quarterback business, even if you have Gino. Well, I said we're in the quarterback business. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so what uh, traits would you still be potentially looking for to add, you know, as far as the depth of that position? Yeah, well, there, there's, it depends who, who we're talking about because there's a variety of things that guys bring. Some guys bring their own personal style, and uh, I have guys in mind that I'm thinking about, so I'll try to do the best I can for you. The, um, <laughs> um, they have their own personal style that they add something, you know, and so this quarterback position is, is one that they come in different shapes and sizes and, and different makeups and backgrounds and all of that kind of stuff. Do they have the magic, you know? So we're looking for the, the magic that allows them to come through uh, to be the player that's, when the challenge is at, at hand, they're at their best, um, whether it's you know, two minutes or end of the games or red zones or you know, third downs or that kind of stuff. So um, we have to be, at this time, we're, it's available to us to be wide open uh, to the variety of different you know, kind of makeups that guys bring. I apologize. Do you feel that uh, veteran is still out there to be had? There's some veterans still out there to be had. There are still, still some guys out that there. That you're interested <laughs> in? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, there's some guys out there. Yeah, we're still looking. Yes. You're up, you're up, what do you think of Mike Daniels' prospects as a head coach after facing this so often? His work has been extraordinarily obvious. He's been really, really good. And, and uh, the, the, his name has been bubbling up for some time now, you know, about his effect and what they've done. They've been such, such a, a unique running football team, and he was in charge of all that stuff. Um, it was innovative, and, and it, innovative to the point where you could tell something was different. And so... Uh, I think all of the, you know, kind of the scuttlebutt about his, his makeup and his unique aspects that he brings, I think he's shown it, and I think it's, the team should be really excited about what he's, and there's no telling what, what, how that's going to show up in, in their, an overall football effect, you know, so I'm anxious to see what happens. Sorry. Your tackle situation, are Dwayne and Brandon still in? Yes. Coach, can you talk a little bit about Travis Homer and in that big running back room and his role going into his fourth season? Yeah, um, thanks for bringing up Travis. Let's talk about uh, Rashad too. Um, yeah, Travis is a is a really exciting all around football player. He's got um, a, a nature about him that separates him. He's tough as hell, and he's physical. Um, he's really fast. Uh, got a great attitude about playing. He's really quiet um, and kind of keeps you know keeps a low profile in, in a way, but. Uh, Guys love him. He's got a terrible basketball shot. I mean, it's one of the worst, worst left hands you've ever seen. So he's got kind of a reputation with us in some some special ways. But he's a real he's a real factor in our club. We we love everything that he brings. He's a fantastic team guy. So and as you mentioned, Rashad Penny, um, or somebody did. Uh, you know, we haven't, you guys haven't asked much about that, but I'm really excited about Rashad coming back. Uh, you know. The way he played at the end of the football season last year um, just jumped off the film. I mean, it jumped. I, I don't know. I don't know how we were able to get him back. Maybe because of his history, but he he was one of the best players in in the league last year, finishing up that football season. And the explosiveness that he generated, and the toughness, and the consistency that that just was so did obvious at the end of the year just made it like a huge element for us to get back. We had to get him back in our club. And so that was one of the negotiations that I was most concerned about and tuned into because I did not want to lose this opportunity that he had finally really kind of put it all together in a way that was so obvious. He was one of the best guys in the league. And uh, the guy we had drafted, that's what we had looked for. I, I don't know if, if, if this is an impacting to you as, as it is to me that he's averaging 5.6 a carry for his career. If look at the list of guys that have averaged five yards a carry in their career. They're some of the greatest players ever played in the league. I mean, incredible players, and uh, and he's got a better average than Gale, and he's got a better average than Jim you know, Brown. I mean, it's, I mean, it's crazy that he's got those kinds of numbers, but that shows us that he's always been explosive he, throughout his years. He just hasn't been able to find the consistency. So the fact that now that it looks as though we've had that accomplished, and he's had this off season, this off season's underway where he's in great shape and he's working out and he's mentally in a great place and, and building towards this season. Uh, I, I'm as excited about that element of our football team as, uh, as anything that we have coming back. And so uh, um, he's going to come back. He's going to get the first shots. He deserves it. He, he's earned it. And, uh, um, and if we can get him and Chris back there battling, that one-two punch is like 
it's, it's all I could hope for. It's what we've envisioned. We just haven't been able to see it uh, as much, and, and he's been frustrated about it. But that frustration has, has put this chip on his shoulder that is exactly the kind of chip that you like. And, and so uh, I'm really, really pumped up about this one. So how do you, how do you balance thanks for asking. <laughs> Real question about that. How do you balance his history of being hurt so much with really well, you know? <laughs> I mean, it was, it was just, just, I can't even tell you how good we'll do that. On your mind when you're, he's 15, 20 touches or 70? No, no, we're going to, I'm going to go with, you know, with the information. I don't have any concern about figuring that out. We've been doing that for a long time, how to, how to do that. So the information will come flowing back and we'll, we'll, we'll just feed off of how he looks and how he does. Uh, it's no different with any running backs that we've had over the years. Um, I think it's an openness that's important to, to see because they're not always the same guy in every game and, and for whatever reason. And that's what we've learned. So we go with who's hot and who, who's most effective. Um, but uh, hopefully we'll do that really well and we'll take care of him and, 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 and bring him through the process and make sure that by the time we start playing games, he's ready to go. Do you feel like you still need to add to that position? Yeah. Yeah. Did, did Brandon Shaw have surgery on his shoulder? No, he did not. He did not. He, um, he's re been rehabbing throughout um, the decision. That was a big decision for him to make. And uh, so he's in a, in, in a full rehab mode. Um, all the reports are that he's doing really well. Um, it's, it's an old shoulder, old injury. It's, that's why it's not one that's necessarily the one that you would operate on. I think you might have alluded to this earlier in the offseason, but do you want to handle the offseason program differently this year than last year? Yeah, that's really, as much as anything that's topical, I think for our coaches this time of year, that's, that's on, that's on the, the top of the list. Um, it's because of the last couple of years have been so uniquely different, um, and we've learned a lot. Um, that, you know, there, the league has set us up. It's a normal offseason. Every stage of it is, is just as it has been in the past. Um, but we've all learned a lot, and so we're in the it really. I'm in the adaptation mode to make it as as well designed as possible for our guys to benefit the most, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Remember, the whole thing's voluntary, you know. So the guys show up if they, if, you know, if they want to, and so uh, respecting that and recognizing that, we got to we're doing some things to try to make it really, really effective. This is a huge teaching opportunity that we've missed out on, the opportunity to, to be face to face with guys in the last couple of years, and, and it, I think it's a. I mean, I know it's affected our game some, you can tell. How do you feel about your uh, center position right now? Um, well, I, I think it's as loaded as it can get. Um, Austin Blythe is a really good football player in our, in our program. And uh, the background that Andy's had with him and Shane have had with him, uh, and the, the reason that they championed getting him back is because of his smarts and his control and his command. He's a little different style athlete than some of the guys. We played with pretty tall guys over the last couple of years, and, and it's been a challenge for 6'5 guys to play that spot. There's not very many 6'5 centers that play, and uh, he's a different makeup. Uh, his wrestling background, and his, you know, his kind of historic wrestling background for him, and it being from Iowa and all, is, uh, shows up. He's got a, n a knack about him and how he moves and all that. But the most valuable thing that he brings and will give him a chance to compete for the starting job is his uh, command and his ability to help a new quarterback, possibly. Um, still young guards, possibly, you know, with, with uh, D. Lou playing and uh, Phil Haynes battling, you know, with Gabe and all that. There's some really good competition there, but he should be uh, the kind of guy that helps guys play better around him. That's, that's what we're counting on. So. Um, you know, Kyle did a nice job last year when he played. Uh, we're looking forward to Shep and see what he can do, too. Uh, he hasn't really had a good opportunity yet, and he's going to get one. Those guys are going to get a very competitive uh, opportunity there and really want to see those guys all play and battle and show, show us what they got. So we have flexibility. Uh, we've got depth, and, and, uh, and we've got some, maybe some, a new aspect to our leadership in that position that could, could Pete, be a couple more, guys. Pete. Pete. Given how taxing these sessions have been for you, like to end them early. I'm kidding. These sessions? You, uh, how, how much longer do you envision yourself coaching? Because you think these sessions are going to knock me out of coaching? you got to be kidding. You know, this is like, nothing. I'm kind of, I'm amazed at, <laughs> no, seriously, you, you, you seem to have the same um, passion for coaching now as you did in 90. Well, I, I better keep getting better. And that's, uh, that's the whole process here you know uh, the things that we learn from year to year I mean there's so much that has happened in coaching in the last couple of years there's just been so many challenges and so many new things to 
you know, to be taxed by to try to figure out and all that. I mean, I just feel like it's just it's an ongoing process of, of battling every year and, you know, kind of rejuvenating the, the, the spirit and, and the approach to it. This is what I've been doing for as long as I can remember. So I, I don't feel one bit different about it. Uh, the, the, the challenges of this season are a little bit unique, that the new opportunities we have to, you know, make this roster as competitive as it's ever been um, is exciting and, and, and thrilling to go about it. Um, you know, every year, I, mean, I don't know, you guys probably think every year we, like, we got it all nailed, we know what's going on. Hell, we don't know. You know, if we start over every se season. Players are not the same year to year. They come back differently every year. They grow, the experiences they go through, the coaches grow, and everything's dynamic and moving. That's, that's what it feels like. So um, as far as how long or whatever, the, these things will not factor into that decision, I promise you, because I don't care. These things are easy. No, I, I was literally kidding. I'm, but I'm used to it, though. It was really, I, I, like, I, like, I appreciate the setup. But you don't, you don't have an end date in mind. No, no. I, I think I, I mentioned to you guys that um, a while back that um, I, I uh, kind of acquired a five-year program. Yeah, you always look five years ahead. And uh, that's, that's really helped me. And... Uh, it's helped me have a, uh, a good perspective on it. And I, I, somebody just taught me that, so. What was Robert Sala like on your staff back in the day? And what kind of qualities does he bring to the table now? Yeah, he was, he was uh, like as impeccably prepared to, to be in the position that he was in. He had, he had it nailed from A to Z. He had all his background stuff. He had, um, he had kept records of everything that he had ever done, showing you that he had done everything he could possibly do to be as good as he could be at that spot and uh, it was just like you were just holding him back the whole time because he was ready to explode to do more and all so um, he, he's a really he's a very unique person and, and uh, great worker great character about him uh, mentality and the way he handles himself and his business and this, this extraordinary family that he's got I mean this guy's except he has seven kids you know who has seven kids anymore you know um, but just the, everything about him is unique and special and uh, Beautiful family, beautiful wife and kid. I mean, the whole thing. He's got the whole package. Can you talk about his relatability to players and how he, he can develop yeah. a young team? Yeah, he's uh, he's really clear. You know, the, the messaging is not mixed in, in any of his delivery. He's really on point. You know, just the way he converses and the way he handles himself, his nature. You, you know exactly who you're dealing with, which is a really important element for for a uh, head coach. Uh, there's a lot of issues and there's a lot of challenges and, and he will not get knocked off course. He'll be who he is and be true to himself and that'll give him a chance to be successful early through the difficult challenges, you know. See, so, what, what did uh, Russell's early success as a rookie do for maybe influence on how a, a rookie can come in and play point guard? Yeah, he, uh, you know, if, if you recall, uh, we restricted what he was asked to do back in the day, and that was to protect the process of him developing. And that, one of the things that can happen is guys are asked to do too much too early, and they, they, they take on all of this burden of the miscues and the issues and the, and the learning process and all. And so uh, there's a protection mode there. And there was, there was a clear-cut time. I don't remember where it was in the season, but I mean, we're in Chicago. I remember the Chicago game when he led us uh, to a, a comeback high or something to put us ahead and then Chicago came back and then we went into OT and there was a moment in that game when I remember saying to Bev I said don't hold him back it's over he's, he's ready to roll and, and it just happened you know you could just, we we had seen him emerge he would have said he should have been that way from the moment he, he walked in that wasn't the case but that was okay yeah it was just his, his makeup but there is uh, there's a process in that to take these guys through and like and for example if Drew's in that position with us, well, I'm gonna do the same thing with him too. We're gonna to make him prove that he's got his act together, make him prove that he can hold all of the information and the mentality and the conscience that it takes to play this position really well. So um, that's just, you know, we could, I don't know what the time frame of that will be. It just depends on really, you know, what he can show and demonstrate. He's got a nice background, but that's, it's, that's the kind of stuff that you're looking for. How is the guy developing? How much command does he have? Is he clear? Can he communicate? Uh, can you trust the, the process that he's in, you know, engaged in to allow him to play really effectively? That, that's that's what this is all about. So. The proliferation of seven on seven at the high school level made quarterbacks more ready Absolutely. to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The coaches. The coaches know so much more about. Remember back in the day that coaches were afraid to throw the football. You know, Woody had told everybody that there was three things bad every time you throw the football that could happen. You know, and so, but that's not the case anymore. I mean. 
coaches, clinics, uh, seven on sevens, uh, all of that stuff happening in, in you know, middle school and, and on up, Pop Warner and on up is just so much different now that the guys are, the guys are way more prepared. And, and uh, so, I mean, it's just an evolution that's, that's taking place. And so, yeah, they are more prepared and they can go f farther sooner and, and your expectations can be really high because of all that. What are they better at because of seven on seven concepts? Okay, here, here's the deal. When I used to think about this with Matt Barkley, when Matt Barkley was coming up, Matt had been uh, at modern day, had, from the time he was a freshman quarterback there, he'd been the, like the only guy that was throwing. He threw curl routes when he was like 10 years old. A curl flat route. Guy runs in the flat, guy runs a curl route. It's exactly the same curl flat you run in the NFL in the championship game. It ain't any different. It's still five step drop and 10 to 12, and here he goes, and he's fit inside a linebacker. That curl route, he was thrown when he was in seventh, sixth grade, you know? So sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. Then he gets to the high school and he throws every pass for four years at modern day, one of the best high schools in the, in the country. Every single day, every single seven on seven, he just acquires millions of reps. The whole 10,000, you know, is, is in effect there. And so there's nothing you can do about that. You know, it's just, it's just they can't hold them back. And so that's, the, that's why the guys are so much better, you know, and, and they're getting coached so much better, so much earlier, all of that. So. Look, this guy drew his live hit. <laughs> we good? Hey, sorry about being late. I was sound asleep. <laughs>